Hi, I'm Bob Canoe, and on the last episode, we did the prep work to put the heads on a Jag V12. This episode, we're going to finish the job if we don't end up with another 30 minute video, which is kind of the way it's been going lately. Dang it. So we're now at one of those milestone points in the construction of an engine where we are going to take the cylinder heads and actually put them on the short block. And we've got our gaskets on, we've got our threads on all of our studs cleaned up. Uh, we've got everything the way it ought to be when we put the cylinder heads on. Now just understand that this is going to be kind of a wrestling match because the same issues that we had getting the gasket on where we had to wiggle the studs around a little bit to get it to go on, it's going to be the same thing with the cylinder heads plus the fact we've got these timing chains that need to go down through the front and that's going to take a little bit of movement, a little bit of horsing around in order to get those to come up through even before we get to the point where we can start dealing with the studs. So, we're going to set it on, get it on to the point where we're at the top of the studs with the timing chain and gears coming up through the cylinder head. And then we got to start working around the studs, uh, making sure that we're close to begin with. What we don't want to be is way off and we start moving back and forth with the studs grinding away in the bottom of the head. We don't want that to happen. And we're going to start out with the B side because that's kind of how I'm set up here right now. That first head right there is the B head. This is the B side. It's just the way it worked out. So let's see how it goes. As you can see, we got the B-side cylinder head down tight against the short block. And what I've done is I've taken the time to get the timing sprocket on the hub on the camshaft and I pulled the chain tight and I'll give you some more insight on this later, but essentially I got everything lined up so I got one bolt in there finger tight so that I don't have all this timing chain and sprockets and hubs and so forth. Just kind of flopping this around on the front of the engine. So now it's just a matter of doing the same thing over here on the A side. Piece of cake. Something I should mention before we go on here. Prior to putting the head on, you need to make absolutely certain that the studs are clean because you don't want your torque being consumed by friction between the thread and the nut. And not only the studs, but the holes that they come up through, take a stainless steel brush a little bit bigger than the hole, put it in a drill and clean them out as best you can. But even then, even though you get them perfectly clean, these teeth can act like a file coming up through that hole and you can get aluminum shavings jammed in the thread. So it's important that you, it's important that you clean these, these, uh, these threads up before you go to the next step, which is to torque the head down which we've already done on the B side. So, cool. Now I've gotten all that housekeeping attended to, now it's time to actually start putting fasteners on all of this. Now as you'll see here, I've got 
these laid out in a nice systematic way. Some of the stuff I'm not gonna be doing today, but the main thing is right here, these are the fasteners for the cylinder head. And whenever I've got a number of fasteners that need to go on assembly, what I will do is I'll arrange them like this. I'll count them out, not necessarily, you know, go to all this trouble. After all, it is a YouTube video. But I put the exact count out that I need in order to do the job. If, for example, I put these washers on and I come up short one, well, where did that one go? Or if I come up long one, well, I miss putting one of these on a stud someplace. So by the time I get done with this, all of these should be on the engine. Now these are the acorn nuts that go on the cylinder head studs. These are the washers that go underneath them. And uh, these serve two functions. First of all, as a washer so that the acorn nut doesn't bear down against a cylinder head. And secondly, it serves as a seal. You can see where on a previous use, the cylinder head, the acorn nut bore down against, the, against this. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do, in fact, with all of these washers that are going to be sealing the water jacket, what I will do is I will take this side and I will put Hylamar on it and then I will put this down. So I've got a good sealing surface against the washer with the acorn nut. That's why you have acorn nuts. If you just had a regular nut on there, the, the coolant would just leak up past the thread. So the acorn nut is there not just for decorative purposes. And what the Hylamar will do will form a seal on this side, which is against the head. And if it's really bad like this one right here, I'll probably take it and hand lap it to get some of the high spots off to make sure that it will seal. These go on the 7 16th studs. These go on the 3 8 And these are the washers that go with the 3 8 And these, on the other hand, do not actually do any sealing. Otherwise, they would be acorn nuts. So let's see what this looks like. We are going to begin torquing down the cylinder head studs. And the heart of this operation is going to be this, a calibrated torque wrench. Uh, this one happens to be a snap-on 3 8 drive, which is fine for what we're doing here. And uh, it's digital. It's a great tool. I love this thing. And on the other end of this, we are going to need a 9 16 and 11 16 sockets, standard depth, but in addition to that, we're going to need these 11 16 and 9 16 crow foot, crow feet tools. And the 11 16 I've actually taken on a grinder and shaved it down a little bit because there's a couple of these acorn nuts that are going to be tough to torque without a little additional clearance. Now, the reason that you're going to need the, the crow feet is the fact that you've got these perimeter studs right here that are situated underneath the intake manifold flanges so you can't get a regular socket on there so you're going to have to use a crow foot to get on there now this presents a bit of a problem not huge but some this works in foot pounds and that's measured by the tool from the center of the nut to the center of the handle here well if you put your crow foot on like this what you've done is you just lengthen the arm which means that whatever you read here is going to be amplified. So what you want to do is you want to have this turn 90 degrees or as close to 90 degrees as you can get it so that while the nut is offset to one side a little bit, the distance between here and the middle of the wrench remains the same. You want these to be torqued as evenly as possible. As I mentioned earlier, when I put the hardware, the nuts and the washers on the studs, what I do with the ones that are going to be exposed to the coolant from the water jacket, I put a little Hylomar on the bottom side. Now, some of you may be saying, because you note that periodically there's little vestiges of blue Hylomar sticking out from underneath some of these parts, that you're going way overboard on the sealant. Well, let's think about this. You got 28 of these studs, these big studs in the center of each head, which means that the top and the bottom of each one of these washers is a potential leak point. So just in the cylinder head nuts, 
you've got 56 potential leak points that coolant can get out. Do you really think that's overkill? Well, you won't think that if you actually happen to get a couple of these leaking after you've torqued the head and you're running the engine, it's on the car and it's gonna be a lot of work in order to solve this problem. So I think that's important. The other thing that you wanna be sure of as you're putting this together is to take some oil and get it on the inside of the nuts. Again, this is to make sure that your torque is being used to hold the head down, not overcome friction between the threads. And you just repeat this uh, another 13 times. Then we're ready to do some torquing. So long before this point, you should have purchased a Jaguar V12 repair manual that's appropriate for your car. And within that, you would have found something like this. This is a cylinder head stud tightening sequence. And across the top here, you see that I've got the torque specs recorded. And the 7 16ths are tightened in three stages, 25, 40, and 52, and the 3 8 in two stages, 20 and 28. Now you need to remember that as you switch back and forth between the regular socket and the crow foot that you turn that crow foot 90 degrees so that you don't amplify the torque on those nuts. So let's do this. Well, we got the cylinder heads torqued on, and all we got to do now is fold on the cam covers, which have only been on here to keep dirt out, and we can move on to more interesting things. No, there's one more really important thing to do, and that really important job is to set the timing chain and sprockets up in order to make sure everything's timed properly, and I'm not going to do that in this video because I've done it in season one or maybe season two and i try not to duplicate videos if i can avoid it uh, i would just say that when you're working with these bolts right here and the locks you want to stuff this area with rags so if one of those gets away from you it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the engine because that means you got to go after it a possibility too horrible to contemplate and make sure that before you tighten anything down you've got this sprocket pulled all the way that you can counterclockwise to get all the slack out between this sprocket and the one of the crankshaft and also double check to make sure that the timing marks haven't moved. Same thing over here. Make sure the timing marks haven't moved and then pull everything tight. Remember you've got the crankshaft stop keeping the crankshaft from moving the pistons at top dead center. So if you pull all the slack out in a counterclockwise direction you know if those marks are correct on the cams that you got your timing set perfectly. And you tighten the bolts on both cams and you pull the tabs up with a hammer and a chisel and a punch. And then it's time to go in here and unlatch the timing chain tensioner. Now you can go ahead and put the cam covers on. A couple more notes. Don't forget these three at the front of the cylinder head, easily forgotten. And at this point, it's a good idea to install the spark plugs because prior to this there's really nothing that we've been using that is going to be small enough to drop down these holes but we've got some small nuts and washers that could actually make it through there haven't wanted to do that up to this point because i was afraid i'd snap one off so but onward and upward 